Welcome everyone to this week's episode of Refresh. We're so excited that you're joining us today. Uh, my name is Dylan Kelly. I'm the online campus pastor. And uh, I'm Brandon. I'm one of the interns here. We're so excited that, that you've decided to join us today. We do this every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Dive a little bit deeper into pastor's message from the previous week. And we just started a new series, but it's not a series that we're going to be doing weekly. It's a series that we're going to be doing throughout this year on communion. So we're really excited about that. It's called Things to Consider at the Lord's Table. And so it was a, it was a really great time. Uh, it, was a, it was a phenomenal message. And then at the end of this week's message, we took family communion together. And if you were a part of our online um, community and our online campus, then you got to take communion with us um, this past Sunday. It was really, really great. It was a lot of fun. I love that part. We were uh, declaring, you know, uh, the stuff over our families. Yeah. I think that was really, really powerful, very yeah, it important. it was really great. Um, and, and I would challenge you if you, uh, if you want to use those declarations over your family, uh, this week, then then feel free to do that. It's uh, I think it's really good to to declare those things throughout the year and to to be able to to declare those things over your family and uh, take time to pray together, take communion together, do what uh, do all those things together. Those are really important things to do as a family. And so um, we'll we'll post those um, declarations uh, so you can so you can view those and pray over those with your family. I think that that would be a really great thing. So this week, things to consider at the Lord's table. Mm-hmm. It was a great message, and uh, we uh, we started off in uh, Luke and read about uh, about um, the uh, communion and all those things, and then Pastor talked about the rich history of communion throughout the Bible through uh, through um, uh, Paul's account and through all those things, and so it was a really great uh, really great message. So tell us something that you got from this week's message, something that that, you, that really stuck out to you. Well, one of the first things he goes on to talk about is he discussed road hypnosis. Uh, how we can do that and when we start doing communion. Uh, from personal experience, I've had road hypnosis and it's like you're going down the road and you just kind of end up somewhere like, how did I get here? Like, I've now I've gone through some traffic lags. Hopefully I stopped when I needed to. <laughs> but uh, anyways, and we can kind of find ourselves uh, going through the motions uh, in this walk and with communion. You know, it's just, it can become one of those things that, oh, it's just something we do on occasion. Yeah. And uh, we forget to take the time to, to reflect and to do in remembrance of what yeah. uh, of Jesus' life, his death, his resurrection. And it takes uh, the time to really uh, focus on what he did for us and how that God's grace changed us and how we don't want to abuse that grace. Yeah. It's it's going to change you to where it's not something that he didn't do it for us to keep on sinning. He did it to uh, forgive us of our sins and to keep us from sin. Right. Uh, yeah. And I think I think with anything that we do, um, you know, as a uh, that we do over and over in church, like communion, baptism, mm-hmm. those things can uh, start to feel uh, kind of like we're just going through the motions. We're just doing those things. We're not really. Um, it's we're not just really, another thing that we're supposed to. Yeah, do. we're not really focusing on that. Even, I mean, even realistically, down to worship. I mean, mm-hmm. we can, we can get to the point where we're like, you know, well, this is where I raise my hands. This is where I, you know, stand up, sit down, all those things. Um, so we have to be careful that that we don't, uh, we don't take those things for granted, and that we actually. Uh, don't get so caught up in the present and miss his presence right yeah that's that's great yeah and that we we keep those things special mm-hmm. um, and uh, I think I think for me when he was uh, when he was talking about that and really his whole main point this week was that we should when we come into communion we should be focused on remembrance we should be focused on remembering the things that God's done for us the things that God's done just in general creation all those things um, and then he goes on later in the message and he talks about that uh, that uh, God draws us in with his loving kindness. And so we, we have to, when we take communion, those are the things that we should be focused on. It's that we're, we're uh, remembering, this doing remembrance of me, we're remembering what God did for us. And that's, that's the whole point behind this week's message is that um, that's, those are the things that we should be focused on. Absolutely. So I think it's, I think it's really important that when, we, um, that when we, we take communion, we take time to say, okay, um, what did... Uh, you know, e- even the small things. What, uh, what did, did I wake up this morning? Mm-hmm. Did so I, if you start, if you yeah. say count your blessings, yeah, and uh, count your curses, and I guarantee your blessings are going to outweigh. <laughs> <laughs> guarantee it, because like there's too many things that we forget our blessings, and just like they're just like the waking up, the right. breathing, like those are all blessings. Because there's a lot of people that didn't this morning. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and uh, and so like like you said, just reflect on what God's done for you. And uh, something he said was, is, uh, look at what he's done for you in the past, and that's a good indicator of what he's going to do for you in the future. Right. 
and uh, for every trial and tribulation you went through, we're still here. So why would you think this next storm is going to be any different? Right. So like, because uh, too many times you're like, oh, this is the one that's going to take me out. <laughs> this, this is it. This is it. Uh, what, was but, that show, um, <laughs> what was the show with the guy? Uh, oh, Sanford and Son, was it him that always had the heart attacks? And he was like, this is the big one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one. <laughs> but, the, but ain't that right, though? Yeah. It's like every time we're like, oh, this is the one that's going to take me out. Yeah. And if we sit there and reflect on what every storm, every trial, every tribulation God has brought us through, why do we think this one would be any different? Yeah. So uh, I'm going to put you on the spot here. We just, oh, man. <laughs> we just talked about uh, the last series that we did was Find Your Why. And uh, your your purpose statement is, uh, I, I feel like, goes right along with this. Uh, so if you can, tell us your uh, tell us your purpose. And you can, you can paraphrase if you need to, uh, but it, it's a really strong purpose statement. So tell us what your purpose is. Well, thank you. Uh, it took us a long while to get it, too. I apologize to Pastor Susan. I was like, I'm sorry if I'm being difficult. <laughs> we were in there for a while. But uh, my purpose is, is that I encourage through the power of my testimony by convincing others of the truth. Right. And uh, we... We're at this leadership seminar. We were there too, where we all picked up a picture, mm -hmm. and uh, we were discussing that. And because uh, I didn't come up with what the picture meant for me until like afterwards, mm -hmm. but I grabbed this little. You ever seen The Hobbit? Uh, yeah. He has a home in the in the hill yeah. or whatever. And for me, I was sitting there looking at it. And I was like, you know, where other people would have just seen another hillside, this hobbit <laughs> seen something he could build into he's yeah. seen a home that he could dwell in and that's how god i felt would see me like where other people would have seen a screw up or or just another addict or uh something uh, uh, unworthy god saw something he could build into he saw something he could dwell into and someone he could use yeah and uh, we kind of took that and we applied it to my purpose so i think i think with that purpose the um the thing that stuck out to me was even through this week through remembrance when we were talking about this a little while ago, it uh, it really struck me that that's really what we what we talked about this week is your purpose. Mm -hmm. Your purpose is remembering what's got what God's done for you, your testimony, and sharing that with other people so that they'll come to Christ. Yeah, because what He did for you is what He's going to do for someone else. Right, and so I I think um, uh, you know we used to have uh, testimony services like when I was a kid. I remember doing those that we would you know everybody in the church would stand up and say what's what God has done for them, and I, I, you know, I've been saved since I was little, little, right. and uh, so uh, you can feel, even if you've been a Christian for a long time, you can kind of feel that's like, a testimony itself, yeah. man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but you can even feel like, well, what you know, I don't have like this, this like mm -hmm. deep dark past, so I can't, you know, I can't benefit others. But you know, that's a lie. Everything that everything that God has done is a testimony. Mm -hmm. Everything that God's done in our life, the fact <laughs> that that I didn't have to go through some of those things is, is a testimony. Mm -hmm. Um, and so remembering what God's done and, and uh, that point that you made that, um, that, uh, or the pastor made, I guess <laughs> that, um, what God has done in the past is a good indicator of what he's, what he's mm -hmm. done in the future. God doesn't ever change. Right. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so because of that, when, when we remember what God has done, what that means is that he's going to continue to do those things because he did those things for, people in the past and he'll continue to do those things for people in the future he'll do the same thing for you so when we remember those things it's not only bringing to our own mind hey i'm going to get through this situation uh god has a good plan for me it's not only doing that for us but even through um through brandon's purpose statement it's going to continue to show people around us the things that he's doing for us so i think in in every instance of our life we have to remember what god has done but especially but especially when um, when we were taking communion and a uh, pastor made the statement, I don't remember his exact statement, but he said, um, when we go into communion, we should have our mind activated. We mm -hmm. should be, we should go into it, remembering all those things. And, and I think that that's really important that we do that. So absolutely. Um, and like, cause <clears throat> the way the enemy tries to get us, he tries to uh, isolate us and think that we're alone, that yeah. no one's going through what I'm going through. But when we share our testimonies, it's going to reach certain people that are going through those things. Yeah. I, uh, when I was giving my testimony for the banquet, I was, you know, hearing all these other, these ladies and these guys' testimonies of the stuff they went through, some traumatic stuff as children, you know, being raised around drugs, being uh, abusive parents and uh, just neglected and everything. I'm like, I didn't go through that. I had parents who loved me. I didn't do any of those things until I, you know, went to college. But right. uh, I, I had no excuse for the decisions I made because I had a pretty good upbringing. 
but that was the whole point of it. It was for me to mine to be different because there's other people out there who went through the same thing that you know had good parents but still fell off. That was yeah. raised in church but still fell away. Yeah, definitely. And that's who that's uh, going to impact. Is someone who thinks that oh you don't you don't understand you haven't been went through what I went through, but the fact is that you know there are people that have, and that's how the enemy tries to get us is make them think we're alone. Yeah, and, and I think um, that's that's part of uh, being a part of the body of Christ mm -hmm. is that we, um, you know, when one part of your body hurts, your whole body is realizing that. Mm -hmm. um, and when one part of your body is is healed, then the whole body should realize that as well. Should and rejoice so, about it. Um, I think it's important that we share those things, but, but we also recognize when other people are hurting and um, our... Uh, our knowledge of what what's happened in the past uh, for us. So, like, uh, I have a daughter, um, Emerson, and she's she's uh, about two and a half, and so cute to say. <laughs> <laughs> so she, uh, when something happens to her, you know, if she gets like a, a cut or she touches something hot or something like that, she remembers that. Mm -hmm. And so, um, from that point forward, she knows if I touch this. So her hand is not um, her hand doesn't know but her mind uh, remembers mm -hmm. and so one part of the body is telling the other part of the body hey remember this hurts to well, yeah. touch this. When, when I did uh, this I got hurt right. so don't and, do it and so uh, your your left hand doesn't do something that hurts and your right hand when you do the same thing that's really good you know, uh, I think that uh, through the body is that's that's the same thing is we can also warn each other and say hey Mm. I see you going down this path, and th this hurt me, and we're all a part of this body, mm -hmm. and so um, I, I think that that's really, really important that we. Absolutely, um, that's good. I haven't heard that heard it put that way before. That's really good. <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> thank you, thank uh, you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so some of the things that Pastor said at the at the end of the service in his conclusion was uh, we remember the the pit from which he brought us. Mm -hmm. So um, you know we remember the things that that happened to us, our our salvation. What what brought us out of that we remember the manner of persons we once were so uh even even if you didn't necessarily get caught uh mm -hmm. you remember the kind of person that you were uh or, or you know the way that you treated people or the way that you were treated you remember those things uh and so uh, that that's important even if you didn't get caught in your in your sin uh it's still important to remember that um he said we remember how he drew us with loving kindness and tender mercies mm -hmm. so um he was basically saying that uh, when, as Christians, when we, um, when we're uh, when we're saved and we're we're trying to reach other people, we're trying to tell people about Christ. We can't tell them like, "Hey, you're going to hell," yeah, because that's not what that's not what God does. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we remember what God did for us, it will inspire us to to reach out and out of and, love, like yeah. not out of hey, <laughs> you're gonna not gonna preach somebody into heaven by tell them how much they're going to hell <laughs> right and that and i think that's yeah that's the whole point he's making was like remember what god did for you because he can do the same thing for somebody mm -hmm. else um he said remember remember how he delivered us from sin self and this present world uh remember how he changed our direction um and i think that that's important is that we when we are uh when we are realizing and remembering we have to remember to keep going the same direction right um and, and remember the things that even the bad times. Remember the things that happened to us that made us change direction in the first place mm -hmm. uh, and that we don't want to fall back into that. Um, and then one of the things that he said, and, and you can talk a little bit about this, uh, one of the things that he said that I, I feel like was uh, really powerful was that he said um, when we take communion and we remember the things that, that uh, he has done, it should in, uh, basically it should inspire us not to sin mm -hmm. uh, because we remember that he, he brought us out, he did all these things, he reached out, for, he reached out with us with loving kindness and tender mercy he, because he did that it should inspire us not to sin right it's not a, a a reason to keep on like god's grace isn't something you should want to abuse it should something right. that uh it should change you right when, you, when he when he saves you he changes you and uh that causes a complete re like it's a uh complete renewing of the mind mm -hmm. uh so like <clears throat> the stuff that you used to the sin that you used to love doing, you should now look at it a completely different way. Because that, well, that's what happens when you repent, right? right? It's not just asking for forgiveness. It's a complete changing of uh, how you view that. Right. Yeah, and, and that's, I mean, realistically, without that, you, you didn't actually change. Right. And so uh, one of the things that we're, that we're uh, teaching our daughter right now is that when, when something happens, she'll, 
she immediately will be like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, we're like, yeah, but do you understand what ha- like, why are you sorry? Mm-hmm. What happened? Uh, and so we'll, um, you know, when she gets in trouble, she'll get time out or, or whatever it is. And then, you know, she always cries because she doesn't, she cries because she doesn't want to be in time out. Right. And, and I think we all do that. We, we don't want to go to hell. And so we, we do all the stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, in reality, we're not, we're not really trying to live a holy life. We're trying not to go to hell. Right. <laughs> and so, uh, and Are we so, doing it to get closer to God or farther away from hell? Right. And so when she, uh, she goes to time out or she gets in trouble, then, then uh, we call her over and we'll say, why did you get in trouble? And, you know, she, uh, right, she's two and a half, so a lot of times she doesn't understand, so we'll say, what did you do, you know, and she'll, you know, I, I hid, or I, whatever it is, uh, and um, then we'll say, okay, are, are we supposed to do that, and she'll say, no, sometimes she says yes, she gets confused by the question, but mm. uh, she'll say no, and then we'll say, okay, so let's not do that again, and then we say, like, we love you, and this is, and I think that that's, um, I think that that's, that's really what, what god is doing to all of us is he's saying like hey it's i'm not telling you this stuff so that you'll just so you you know whatever it is it's i'm telling you this so that you won't uh, have to live this life i'm telling you this because that's that's not what we do and then his loving mercy he's he does love us and that's the reason because i think i think a lot of times we get into something into sin and we don't we don't see the the end result Mm -hmm. and um I know. I'm, I mean, I know a lot of people in programs, uh, whether it's Project Hope, Saving Grace. Um, there, there's a couple in Arkansas that I'm aware of, and I've talked to some of them before. And I, I'm just like, so when you got into drugs or alcohol or whatever it is, did you get into it and go like, I really hope I get addicted? Mm-hmm. Like, well, I, don't, th- I think what it is, uh, <clears throat> the way I, I explain it is like, have you ever seen the alcohol commercials? Uh, yeah. the advertisements everyone's always having a good time you're uh, it makes it seem cool and uh, it makes it he makes it appealing yeah but what they don't show you is the person driving home drunk that kills that family that person that yeah. man who gets drunk and beats his wife and his children that that alcoholic that has the shakes and is you know drinking himself to death they don't show that that's yeah. hidden and that's how the enemy gets us he makes sin uh, whether it be drugs alcohol women uh, men or Whatever, he makes it seem appealing. He doesn't show you the end result. He keeps that yeah. hidden from you. And so like you said, when we do, when drug addicts or alcoholics or whatever your struggle is, that's, uh, we don't, like you said, we don't see the end result. We don't right. think, oh, I'm, I wanna get addicted. Like, we always think that we're the, the exception, that yeah. we're strong enough, that we, can, we have control over it and not over us. And, and so two things about that, one, um, I think that uh, we have to, when we take communion, we have to remember those things. Mm-hmm. Not we, we can't just remember the good things. Uh, we have to remember the things about us that, that we didn't like. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then on the other side of that, we have to, um, we have to be focused on, uh, um, I just lost my second thing. So we were talking about, uh, we were talking about remembering not only the good things, but the bad things, but also that, um, that, uh, I lost it. I completely lost it. Uh, so, so I think there's that. And then um, one of the other points that Pastor said was uh, that we are um, uh, we are not to be focused only on Jesus' death, but we're yes. also to be focused on. He said, "We're doing this in remembrance of me, not my right. death." Right. And then uh, he went on to say something about how, you know, uh, that if it wasn't for Jesus' resurrection, would we still be lost in our sin? Mm-hmm. So you have to remember the resurrection, his life leading up to that, right. and all the miracles and all the, yeah. and his teachings. You right. know, you gotta remember all that. Oh, I remembered what it was. So uh, <laughs> that was good. Uh, so um, I think too, the other thing that we can do is, uh, especially in a, in a in a culture like uh, like we have here at CT, where Project Hope and Saving Grace are around a lot, mm-hmm. um, I think we can look at somebody else's thing. And we could say, "Oh, I'm not a, I'm not like that far." Mm-hmm. So I never went that far. Yeah, so I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I never did and, that. And I think we can really get, uh, we can really get blindsided by, um, by sin because we look at other people and we go, "Well, at, at least I'm not like, uh, at least Bro, I that's don't how do I, that. that's how I got to where I was is because I kept justifying, well, at least I'm not doing that, or at yeah. least I'm not that bad." And and you know some of those things, again, sometimes people don't get caught. Some of those things don't lead to it. And, right. And. Hey, good for you. But the I think I think we can focus on like, 
well at least it's not that far right and and we don't remember the things that actually hurt us uh the things that you know it, it, you can still get to a bad place even mm. if you're right. not you know addicted to drugs say, or whatever uh, our for all, all the wages of sin is death. It's just some sin makes you look like death. <laughs> but, but it all but it all brings death. When desire is conceived, it uh, gives birth to sin, and when sin's fully grown, it brings forth death. That's, that's all of it. Yeah. So I and, and I think I think ultimately that's that's the whole thing is um, we we look at something and we say this is this is something that I want. Mm -hmm. This is something that I that I desire to have. And we forget that God has the best plan for us. Mm. And then um, we get to this point where we can't do anything else. We get to that pit that pastor talked about. And then, uh, you know, we come out of that. Jesus, uh, Jesus heals us, uh, um, brings us back into the family, um, tries to have a relationship with us. And, and when we do, then we forget about those things. And that, I think that's the whole, the whole point of pastor's message this past week was that we can't forget. Mm -hmm. We can't forget the things that God's done for us. We can't forget the the way that we were. We can't forget. Um, we can't forget that he that God loves us. We mm -hmm. can't forget that there's other people out there just like us. Mm -hmm. And we can't forget that our testimony is is what's going to ultimately help help those people. Absolutely. Pastor made a point, um, and, and then we'll we'll um, we'll wrap it up after this. But Pastor made a point on on Sunday that um, people are. Um, uh, People are in um, in a situation, and um, they're uh, uh, <laughs> people are in a situation, and then they uh, they they get to the point where they uh, need Jesus, and then man, I just lost it again. Oh, I thought you were getting there. <laughs> uh, hang on, let me look at the, the notes here. So um, uh, that's what it was. So. Pastor made the point on Sunday that people are in a situation and um, they only, uh, most of the time, people don't come to Christ except that they, um, except that something bad happens in their life. Right. Uh, we don't have it all together when we come to Christ. <laughs> right. And and I think that that's uh, why I, I've, I've heard this said before that that's the reason why a lot of wealthy people don't. Um, uh, my grandfather is a good example of that. I've been, ever since as a kid. Uh, I've been wanting him to get saved, but he's a great guy, the mm -hmm. sweetest guy you'll ever meet. He's very successful, mm -hmm. uh, has great career, uh, money, but he d he don't know Christ. Yeah. And even though he has all those great attributions, he's just as lost as any drug addict on the streets. Yeah. And I remember as a kid asking him, sorry, this had a big part of my purpose statement, sure. but I was talking to my grandfather and I was like, you know, Papa, do you know Jesus? And he's like, no, I guess I never met him. And I remember even as a little kid, his tone, he was saying it as if, how can I meet someone who don't do this? And I've been praying it for my grandfather and just hoping that my testimony will be able to lead him to Christ. Cause he's, he's telling me when I was at my worst and yeah. uh, knowing what God's done for me now. And the, I tell him all the time, like I couldn't have done this without God. I've tried to do it on my own. Yeah. And I've seen what my life looked like when I do it on my own and it's not pretty. And so like, I, I just really hope that, you know, one day he'll like, come to Christ and realize that you know he can do for me what he did for him and, he, and I think that's how the enemy can get a lot of people is he'll he'll keep them so caught up in their uh, earthly blessings that they don't have the desperation or the need to turn to God yeah uh, I heard it put this way once it's like you know you're in a you're in a jail cell and the, the gates wide open but you have everything you could ever want anything you could ever need is in that cell so you never leave until one day that gate slams shut and you turn around and everything's gone and there's no way out. Yeah. And I think that's how he gets a lot of people. Yeah, it's, it's, um, yeah, that, that can get a, a lot of people when we, when we're living a life and we feel like, um, we feel like everything's together. Mm -hmm. I, I think that that's when people probably stumble the most mm -hmm. is, is when they, they're in a position and they think, man, I'm, I'm doing good. Um, and, and I think, I think realistically that can get a lot of Christians. Um, because we can sit in church and everything can seem fine and and realistically something's going on in the background that you know is not open to everyone that that can really get a lot of people and so I think through this through this message of remembrance I think it um, uh, I think it, it really I, I think it really hit home for a lot of people um, I was gonna look up uh, um, 
I, I think that it can it can really hit home for a lot of people that we uh, that we would remember those things. And um, so First Corinthians eleven uh, talks about the uh, talks about communion, and then, um, it says. Uh, uh, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, uh, this is the cup, the new covenant of my blood. Uh, do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Uh, right before that, um, he's talking about how when we, uh, or sorry, right after that, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord is in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body. Um, everyone ought to... Um, examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup mm -hmm. and i think that that's that's important is that um we remember those the pit and we remember those things but also we we remember what god did and say am am i am i right mm -hmm. right now am, am i in a good am, am i in a good place right is, is this really where God wants me to be is this where God's leading me to be and, and I think that that's important um, because we can all fall at any time um, and, and to keep that in perspective is, is really important absolutely um, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna pray say one last thing yeah sure uh, just something that I think we all need to it's something that hit me uh, while we were uh, in service so pastor was going on talking about how you know we can't put him on a pedestal and how you know that he's human too, mm -hmm. and he goes with us. And I think too, too often do we see our pastors and they, uh, and we're all pray for me, pastor, pray for me. Uh, this, this, and this, and this is going on. And too many times do we forget to pray for our pastors and realize that he is a human and that he has a family too and goes through things just like we do. Sure. Because we see them in you know at their best when they're being used by God. Sure. And so we forget that they have a home life. They still have struggles like yeah. we do, and they have family problems and death and sorrow and everything else and too often we you know like feed me feed me and we yeah. forget to you know pour into them so i think it's important for you know all of us to keep our pastors in prayer and their families and just ask god to you know as he continues to uh use them to bless them and to uh comfort them and that they find peace uh and everything that they do definitely yeah I, yeah that's very important and and i i know that um people uh people lead better with that support and with that with that help we love our pastors and, and they do a phenomenal job of leading us um and so it you know it can get it can get hard sometimes to remember that people in leadership are our people because mm -hmm. um, we, we we only see them like i said we see them when they're being used by god yeah. so like uh it's hard to remember that you know they still have they go through the same stuff that we go through yeah so. we're gonna pray in just a second and if you'll pray for us and i want you to I want you to pray for your grandpa for one, and then our pastors, um, they're, uh, they're very important to all of us, and, and um, so I think, that, I think that we need to do that. I think that's really important. Um, and so uh, we're going to pray, and then we have a couple announcements for you, uh, and uh, thank you for being with us this week. And so, uh, Brandon, if you'll pray for us. Yes, sir. Lord, I just want to thank you for uh, allowing me and Dylan to come uh, this week and being able to do this and to share what you've uh, put in our hearts and the pastor's heart and that uh, hopefully that everyone walked away with something and that you would uh, give us the wisdom to apply it to our lives. Lord, I just want to, uh, I pray for my grandfather right now, Lord, that you would uh, use me to, in my testimony, to reach out to him or, or anybody, just uh, that he would come to know you, Lord God, that you would create that desperation uh, in him to, to, to know who you are and how good you are. Lord, and I also want to pray for our pastors that you would bless them, Lord, and their families, and that you would just uh, comfort them and put your hand of protection over them and their families, Lord, that uh, their very lives serving you would be a form of worship to you, Lord. And, uh, I pray for all the pastors and all the leaders in uh, ministry that you would just uh, you would bless them, their families, and their ministries, that you would use them to impact you and uh, glorify your kingdom, Lord. Uh, we thank you, and we ask you all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So thank you again for being with us today. Um, we're really excited to be able to do this every week. So uh, our, our next service is this Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, actually, 9.50. I always forget. We do the pre, pre and post service. So 9.50 this Sunday. Uh, we're really excited to, to be with you again. Pastor's preaching a message called uh, Life's Biggest Issue. It's really Come good. On. Uh, uh, so I've looked over the notes. It's really, really good. It's, it's, it's really He's good. cheating over here. He's already if looked at the notes. If you want to know what life's biggest issue is, join us uh, Sunday morning at uh, 9.50.
it's going to be a really, really great message. And it's actually a two-part series. So for this week and next week, Pastor will be preaching that. We're, we're really excited about that. We have a uh, worship night with our online community March 29th at 7 p.m. Uh, it's only going to be online. And so uh, if you want to join us for that, it'll be uh, live on Facebook, <coughs> YouTube, and our website, myctHouston.org. And uh, we're, that's going to be a lot of fun, mm-hmm. and it's going to be it's going to be awesome. So uh, it's strictly online. It's featuring Kesa Smith, one of our worship leaders here. And then over the next few months, we're going to be we're going to be doing those once a month and featuring different uh, worship leaders from our from our church. And so we're we're really really excited about that. Shout out uh, Carlos Sarsuela. He just dropped his first single. Yeah, <laughs> you seen uh, that? <laughs> March March twenty fifth, I think, is when it comes out. And so uh, yeah, check that out if you if you haven't. Carlos Sarsuela uh, on Facebook. That's awesome. Um, and so uh, join us for that. 9.50 on Sunday. We'll be back here with you next week at 10 a.m. for Refresh. And uh, again, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our online community and our family. And uh, we can't wait to see you on Sunday at 9.50.